Once upon a time, in a quiet and remote corner of the countryside, near the edge of a forest, stood an old but cozy farm. On this farm lived two brothers, Ima and Yessi. Ima was the older, wiser, and more cautious of the two. He always kept their parents' advice in mind and made sure nothing bad ever happened. Yessi, on the other hand, was younger, full of energy, and curious about everything. He loved exploring new places, discovering something unusual, and diving into exciting adventures. Their home was peaceful, and their parents had taught them how to take care for the garden, the animals, and all the other daily farm tasks. But the forest that bordered their home always seemed mysterious and a little dangerous. The locals told stories of people who had ventured into the woods long ago and had never seen them again. These were tourists who, inexperienced, wandered too far and never found their way back. Such tales kept the brothers from visiting the forest often, but yes, he was always enthusiastic about it, dreaming of the day when they could explore the forest deeper. One beautiful summer day, when the skies were clear and the sun's rays warmed the earth, Yessi decided that today was perfect for an adventure. He approached Ima, who was calmly reading a book under the shade of a wooden porch by the farm. And with bright, eager eyes, Yessi exclaimed, Ima, let's go to the blue lake today and one beyond the forest. We rarely go there but I have a feeling it'll be the best place for a swim today. Ima looked up from his book and gazed at his younger brother. I don't know, Yessi. The forest is dangerous. We rarely go there, and you know the stories about the people who got lost. But Yessi was persistent. His smile stretched wide and a spark of adventure danced in his eyes. Nothing bad will happen. We'll stick together, and the lake is so beautiful. I know it'll be great. After a moment of hesitation, Ima finally agreed. He knew that if he didn't give in today, yes, he would only try harder to convince him next time. Fine, let's go, but promise me you'll stay close and won't wander off, Ima firmly insisted. The two brothers packed a few snacks and set off. The forest was green and deep, its branches rustling softly in the breeze, and birds chirped happily above them. The path to the blue lake was winding, weaving between old moss-covered rocks and ancient amber-colored oaks with trunks as thick as walls. The brothers enjoyed the serenity of the forest as they made their way forward, and soon they arrived at the blue lake. The lake was magnificent, its surface reflected a clear blue sky, and the water was as clear as glass. The brothers quickly jumped in to swim. As usual, Ima kept an eye on Yessi, who laughed joyfully while splashing around, while he himself took a moment to relax. The water was pleasantly warm, and for a while, the brothers forgot all about the forest's mysterious dangers. But after the swim, as they were stepping out of the water, Ima noticed something strange. At the edge of the lake, hidden between the bushes, stood a small house. But it wasn't just an ordinary house. It shimmered as it was made of bright glowing light. It looked as though some magical secret was concealed within it. Ima, look! What is that little house? Yes, he asked his eyes gleaming with excitement. I don't know, Ima replied cautiously, but it looks very unusual. Maybe we shouldn't go near it. But of course, Yessi was already running towards it before Ima could even finish his sentence. Ima sighed, knowing that nothing would stop his curious brother. As they approached, they realized that the house wasn't a house at all. It was something entirely different. It was a spaceship. The gleaming craft looked otherworldly and surreal. The door slowly opened with a soft hiss, 
and filled with curiosity, the brothers stepped inside. The interior was filled with glowing panels, buttons, and screens flashing in various colors. Suddenly, a voice echoed from within the ship. Hello, little travelers. The voice was friendly and cheerful. I am this ship, and I've been on Earth for 15,000 years. I've quietly observed the world, but now I've grown bored. Would you like to play a game with me? A game? Emma asked, still in disbelief, that they were speaking to a spaceship. Yes, the ship continued. I'll give you a riddle. If you can solve it, I'll take you on a journey to any place you wish to go. But if you can't, no worries. I'll simply bring you back to the Blue Lake. The brothers exchanged glances. This sounded exciting. All right, Emma said. What do we have to do? It's a test of attention and wit, the ship replied. Listen carefully. What always comes but never arrives? The brothers stopped for a moment. Emma tapped his fingers on one of the panels, deep in thought, while Yessie blurred out, Maybe it's the wind. It comes and goes. But Emma smiled and shook his head. He suddenly knew the answer. No, Yessie, I think the answer is tomorrow. Tomorrow always comes, but never truly arrives, because when it does, it becomes today. The ship suddenly began to glow brighter as if it was pleased. Correct. You are smart children. Now I'm happy to fulfill my promise. Where would you like to go? Without hesitation, Yessie shouted, Take us to the moon! The ship chuckled lightly and replied, As you wish. Off we go. And so they soared into the sky and the brothers felt themselves leaving Earth behind. They rose higher and higher until they finally found themselves in space. Through the ship's windows, they could see the stars and the planets and the moon. The two brothers gazed out at the moon's gray, rocky surface, which looked so strange and majestic. They could hardly believe that they were actually on the moon, so far from Earth, among the stars and mysteries they had only ever dreamed of. Ima and Yessi were filled with wonder, but suddenly, Yessi stopped and tugged at Ima's sleeve. Ima, Yessi said, his voice tinged with worry. We've seen the moon, but we need to go back home. Dad will be waiting for us for dinner. Ima nodded. He knew that as exciting as the adventure was, they couldn't miss their family's evening routine. Yes, yes, you're right. We can't be late for dinner. The brothers turned to the ship. Could you please take us back to the Blue Lake? The ship responded with a friendly beep. Of course, I understand that family is important. Prepare for landing. The ship hummed softly and the brothers felt themselves returning towards Earth. In a moment, they were back by the forest's edge, in the very spot where their adventure had begun, by the shimmering blue lake. Everything was calm and unchanged, as if they had never journeyed to the moon at all. Goodbye, amazing ship, Yessie yelled cheerfully. Ima waved as the doors closed. The spaceship slowly lifted into the sky, it disappeared among the trees, leaving behind only a quiet glow. The brothers ran back along the forest path. The sun was already sinking lower, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink. When they finally reached their farm, the warm light from the kitchen windows and the smell of dinner greeted them. At the dinner table, their parents were waiting. Their father smiled kindly and said, Where have you two been all day? I hope you had a good time. The brothers exchanged a secretive glace. Ima simply smiled, while Yessi, his eyes still sparkling with the excitement of the adventure, said, Oh, we were by the Blue Lake, and it was very interesting. Their mother looked at them closely and smiled warmly. Well, how was your day? The brothers exchanged another glance and only smiled mysteriously. They knew that the story of their trip to the moon would remain their special little secret. This adventure was too magical to share with anyone else, and they both understood that sometimes the best adventures are the ones you keep in your heart. They carry the secret of the stars and the moon.